Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it is Tuesday. It's July 11th. This will be our chart lesson for the day. And you can see uh, here on our daily chart that we had some follow-through buying today. It started off as another range day, but we broke out and eventually uh, traded higher and uh, closed higher as well. So um, maybe we'll come back and test this a third time up here. Maybe we'll get a triple test and sell off. I mean, we could go higher. I mean, we, we've gotten, I mean, we just bounced off the midline, so we're way out of, I shouldn't say we we're way out of, but we're still out of uh seriously over oversold territory so we could go a good bit higher here uh i think we're going to find some resistance here but if prices push through we could go a good bit higher so we'll see what happens uh each time we've come up to this level we've uh seen uh selling the last couple of times but um this market wants to go higher so don't argue with it go where it takes you and um we'll see what happens but uh looks like we're going higher still yet to me so um Anyway, let's flip over to the 2000 tick chart and we can see what that looks like and uh, go through the trades and wrap this day up. Uh, here we go. You can see the original range here, the light blue. And we, we broke out once and failed, got back in the range. And then uh, notice when we bounced, when we found support early here, that means we're probably going to go higher. And you want to look for at least a measured move. So uh, this dashed line is an equal distance from here to here as the range is wide and um, that's the tool we have on our um, tool bar we just click on it and you can see I just do a show a measure move now it's gone and show measure move puts it back on there for me and so that would be our target right there and you can see that would have been a great target we actually overshot that target uh, ended up closing a little bit below it but that that's generally how we find our targets with measured moves. And that's how we do our range measured moves. They're usually just equal to a, the distance of the original range. And that's what we had today. So, um, but yeah, we spent most of the day just kind of range bound. Uh, we got a little higher here, but most of that buying came at the close right around three o'clock or it's not really the close, but that's when most people exit right around three o'clock and then, but there it is so let's uh let's zoom in and you can see we were uh, we were we were certainly in a range until about 11 o'clock when we broke out here but that failed like you would expect even if you're going to go higher usually most breakouts fail even if only temporarily and you can see that's what happened here uh, we tried to bounce several times and couldn't uh, and then uh, found a little higher low here uh, this channel played out. You got a break and new low. You got a green channel here and you had an overshoot. It still tried to make a new high but couldn't. Uh, a lot of times an overshoot will just lead to a, another a reversal, which is another channel working down or back into the range or whatever. Uh, and then that blue channel played out. We had a break, moved to a new low, and traded higher. This is like a really strong buying trend right here. Uh, but there it is. So let's zoom on in. We'll go through the trades real quickly and uh, kind of wrap this day up. Seven o'clock came just as we're kind of bottom, making this little double bottom here. That's tempting to take. And, you know, maybe you take that double bottom. Uh, it's just a first entry. It's a little early. I'd probably wait. Uh, we've already had a break of this uh, channel, this screen channel and, and a couple of legs up. So, uh, yeah, could we make another leg up? Sure, but we could turn down. So this is a little risky. It's not a, I mean, it closes probably close enough to its upper one third, but it's not a given for sure. It's certainly not the greatest signal bar, but I think it probably qualifies. If you took it, I, you know, I, you might could mark it green. I'm not going to, but you could argue for it to be green. Uh, and then we shot on up, made the high, and then we made a lower high. I like this one. It's a little congested, but being that far away from the EMA, you got to understand that it's probably the uh, resistance right here, and that we the path of least resistance is going to be back to the 21 bar EMA. It always is, and uh, we shot on down there pretty quick, um, and then we ended up making a triple test right here with another nice signal bar. And you can tell by this time, it looks like we're in a range. Uh, that's about as good a setup as you're going to get for a range trade, and off we go higher 
you might have even got a. I mean, usually I don't try to get runners in these ranges, but if you do, you might have probably got a run. You might have got a runner there. And then we have the failed breakout. Now this made a new high, so this is a little risky taking that directly short. Although most breakouts are going to fail, um, but you don't you, you don't want to get caught in the momentum and be early. Uh, so I would say you want to wait on a lower high here. This actually gapped over and, and moved pretty quickly, so you may not have got in that trade anyway. I, I marked it green, but uh, generally uh, when you make that new high like that, you're better off to wait on a lower high. And we don't get that; the bottom just falls out and it just falls straight to straight down. And then of course you get a break with two legs. Uh, that one is tempting, but again, um, I would want to wait and just make sure you're not early. So, um, I mean, you got the two bar matching high there. If you took that, uh, you wouldn't have got out of it. You would have quickly got caught in this range. So if you did take that second entry, um, once you started going sideways, I would have taken whatever it would have given me here. I would have taken my tick or so and got out. Uh, you won't get that opportunity a lot, but this one gave you, before you got, would have got stopped out, it gave you multiple opportunities to get out with a tick or so, and or scratch at the very least, and that's what I would have done here. Uh, and then finally you break out the bottom and fail. Uh, it's It went a little lower, not a whole lot lower. It basically looks like a double bottom there. Again, though, you're better off to wait on the high or low, um, but I like that trade. Maybe you take it. And um, it runs straight up and goes out the other side and then fails. I marked this one um, red. It closes right at the... That was the other thing. If this would have closed inside, I'd probably say go ahead and go long there. I'd made that blue. Um, this one closes almost exactly the same. Uh, but we traded down here. So the trend is... Uh, the, the bias is down. So that's why I like... I'm a little more hesitant to go short on this one it makes a two bar i don't know if you can see it but these are the two bar matching high so that's like a little double top so it's a little different than one that has a lower low than this one so even though this is a higher high than this high it makes a two bar matching high so this bar is lower than this one so it just takes it down to a little lower level and makes it a double top uh, or a lower high so maybe you take that one i marked it red and it is kind of with the trend. You might expect another leg down like this. And you can see we didn't quite get it. But that was our target based on a measured move. Uh, you get a lower high here. But we moved too far for that to be a tradable lower high. And it does break higher and turn down as an engulfing bar. And that makes it really tempting to have your uh, stop there. Because that generally means you're going to have trap people. And you can see how quickly it dropped down, and we did. But the problem is uh, you've had some support across here, and you're still inside that support, so you could get burned on that. So I'd probably wait for this to close, and then you don't have much room to this low or this low. So I'd probably just skip that trade. I just I didn't mark it. And then, of course, you drop on down, you get a break. Uh, you get a second entry here, but the signal bar doesn't qualify for a trade. And then you, you kind of get a little triple test here, but this signal bar is not quite good enough. It is a second entry. You got a new high here, first entry, second entry. If your signal bar was a tad better there, by all means, take that trade. But with that signal bar, no, I'm not going to take that trade. I'm going to wait. I'm going to see if I get a, re a reversal or a failure or something, and we don't get that. We just run up until... You get a first entry, second entry, um, and again, this breaks lower and fails and turns up. I like going long on the engulfing bar on that. Uh, if you wait till here, you don't have enough room really to get out, and it's a little more suspect. But I like entering that on the engulfing bar and taking that trade. Because if it breaks loose and hits there, it's probably going to push on up, which it does. It kind of fights its way on up, and then we're just kind of chopping along here. Uh, again, you get a breakout. This one is tempting because it's the original range. So you could look at that as a triple test, but it left a little stem on there. And so I was a little hesitant on that one. Uh, it comes down here and you get a triple test down here, but you don't have room to get out back to here. You did just kind of clear it out, so it's a chance it could go higher. But look at this bar height. Hit, turn down, uh, and it ends up pushing higher, but not, it doesn't always do that. 
So I think you have to wait. And then you get another test here. This makes a higher high, but it still closes well back within the big range and the little range. And you still got plenty of room. I like going short on that one. Should be a quick, easy scalp. It is. Lower high here, but you don't really have enough room to scalp out. It would have worked anyway, but you don't know that. And you may not be able to get out of that. There's, I think there's only five ticks there or something. There wasn't quite enough ticks to trade that as a lower high. As you see, it's only five ticks. And so that concerns me. And yeah, it could go that extra tick. I mean, it's one you might argue to be green. But I would wait on that. And then, of course, you bounce off this trend line. You get this trend line going here. And it just keeps going. And it, just, it confirms it here, here, here. I mean, this one's tempting. This is a little bit congested right here. But when it pushes up, makes a new high, and comes back. And then comes back and makes another higher low. On a, and that is a second entry. Although we don't look for second entries. If you, if you get one, pay attention to it. Uh, again, you, this gap's over. So you may not have got in this trade. But if you could, that's a great trade. Easy runner on that. And it just takes off. And, of course, you get a close outside new high, then a lower high. Um, I like trading this as a lower high back to the EMA. Uh, again, it looks a little congested, but we're so far away from the EMA, and it looks like the other one we talked about, um, similar to this right here. I'd take that trade. And we try to go higher. Um, I'd call this a double top once, twice. So this is somewhat of a failure, but it's on the wrong side of the EMA. And unfortunately, you just don't get a chance to ride this big sell-off out. <clears throat> and then we bounce. Notice we added a big overshoot of the green channel. And then we get the break. And so prices still try to make a retest, but find this trend line is impenetrable and turn back down there. So notice we're coming up. You get a break, couple legs up. And you turn down, you actually confirm this trend line here, but uh, this just uh, right off the key entry point, I like, a little ways away from the EMA, I like going short there. <clears throat> and what you might expect is another measured leg down. Here's your first leg, and then look for your second one. And both times a day, we came up a little bit short on our measured move, which usually means you're going to go much further in the other direction and guess what that's when you get this big rally but anyway i like that short and then you're just chopping along here there's a it's tempting to go long there but i just think you have to wait and you're just chopping along and finally you turn you break back out of the uh, original range and you get a break of the trend line at the same time and you get a little real quick one, two, three, triple test there with a big bearish bar. And you would expect prices to try to make a new low, lower than this original low on this uh, blue channel, which is here. And you notice we just barely did that, and then it reverses. So you're looking for a new low here, then you get it. Then it bounces, you make a higher low. I like going long there just to ride it back to the EMA and back up to the uh, trend line. And you may catch a reversal. And sure enough, you do catch a reversal here. Uh, this is not a reversal setup uh, here. And then pulls back first entry, second entry. This is really a third entry. But the reason I like this one is the first break, and it's still two legs back to the EMA. And um, you find some strong support across there and a nice signal bar. So I like I don't know if you want to go long up way up here when this closes because you don't have a lot of room back to that resistance. But when it comes by there, it breaks lower and fails and turns up. Um, you could go long right there. It's getting a little late in the day, so you want to be a little more careful. I don't. There's a good chance you're still going to make that new high, and you might make a measured move up here. But you got to. I mean, look how I many. One, two, three, four, five, six matching highs there. And so there's a good chance you could fail to break above that. So you got to be real careful with that one. So it's only blue if you entered it on the engulfing bar. And it looks a little congested to try to trade an engulfing bar. So that's another concern. 
So maybe you only mark this one green. Um, it's close to being blue if, if you trade it on the engulfing, but if you're going to trade it, it probably should be green. I probably should have made it green that late in the day. But in real time, I, I like that trade. But there it is. Um, this is a range day, and we pretty much moved a little bit more than a measured move. And uh, that's how I saw it. So plenty of trades here, quite a few trades. However you want to trade it. But, um, yeah, not much else I can say about today. We just had a range day, broke out, measured move. And it looks like we're still trying to go higher even though we're overnight. This is real early, so this doesn't, this is meaningless really at this point. So, but, uh, yeah, just another range day with a late afternoon rally that that went a little more than a measured move. So, uh, I'm going to wrap it up. We'll be back again to do it tomorrow. I'm done for today. This is Matt with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.